you're listening to Yo Quiero Dinero, a personal finance podcast for the modern Latina. I'm your host, Janice Torres Rodriguez, and I'm here to help you be poderosa with your dinero. I'm an engineer, a blogger, and an entrepreneur that built a $50,000 side hustle, and I'm obsessed with all things personal finance. On this show, we're going to talk about how to make dinero, how to keep your dinero, and how to make it grow. Are you ready? Vámonos. Hola, mi gente. Welcome back to another episode of Yo Quiero Dinero, the podcast. This is your host, Janice. And today we're going to be talking about how to channel your inner hustler. Oh, so we're going to be talking to Delilah D. Delilah, if you don't already follow her on social media, is a Latina powerhouse and the true definition of a 24-7 businesswoman. She's most known as the founder and CEO of Shift Media, a digital content and events agency focused on empowering communities of color to transition from dreamers to doers. Delilah is best known for her work in event curation and experiential marketing, working with brands like iHeartRadio, HBO, Google, and Salesforce, and she's based in Philadelphia. Whether she's producing events or managing her amazing online store of inspirational merch or hosting pop-up events or virtual events, I mean, Delilah is always on the go, and her multi-layered career continues to grow and positively impact those around her, serving as a catalyst for her community to pursue their dreams. I cannot wait for you to hear this conversation with Delilah. I've been following her on social media for years, and she is like the pep rally cheerleading squad that you need in your life whenever you're doubting yourself and you need to just have a fire lit under your butt and start getting your shit together. So I love having those people on my feed, especially my social media feed, because I feel like so often we can have like really toxic people that we follow on social that just make us feel like shit about everything that we're doing. Delilah is definitely the opposite. She is the born and bred hype woman to push you in the direction that you need to go. You can check out Delilah D on Instagram at I am Delilah D and check out her amazing online merch store at shift world. That's S H F T world.com. So before we get into today's episode, I just want to let you know This episode is about channeling your inner hustler, and we are hosting the Side Hustle Summit on October 26th. It is not too late if you're listening to this in real time. It is October 25th, Sunday, so that means that the Side Hustle Summit starts tomorrow. So if you haven't yet gotten your tickets, first, WTF, what are you waiting for? There's literally over 130 people registered for this event. It's going to be wild. It's going to be lit. It's going to be cray. And we're going to be doing so much empowering education. You're not even going to know what to do with yourself. So if that sounds like something you want in on, head over to YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com. Click on the Side Hustle Summit 2 tab to get your ticket. And I will see you there. As a reminder, if you're loving this podcast, please take a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Literally, it's the cheapest, the easiest, free thing that you can do to help us continue to grow and to help people like you find us too. You take care of your body by exercising, eating right, and getting enough sleep. But are you doing the same for your mind? On this podcast, we're always talking about mindset and mental health as the foundation for financial wellness. So we're super proud to partner with BetterHelp to get you access to professional, affordable therapy right at your fingertips. Even with health insurance coverage, traditional therapy costs over $100 per session. And that's if you can even get an appointment. Online counseling is an effective, convenient, and affordable way to get help with many issues. You can chat with your therapist at your convenience in whatever mode you're most comfortable with. Just take a short quiz and get personally matched with one of BetterHelp's professional, licensed, and experienced counselors and get the support and guidance you need to start making a change. As a reminder, online therapy is not suitable for someone who's suffering from a severe mental health condition that makes them a danger to themselves or others. Download the BetterHelp app today and get started with 10% off exclusively for Yo Quiero Dinero podcast listeners. Just use the discount code DINERO, that's D-I-N-E-R-O, and you can get 10% off your first month. You can also go to betterhelp.com slash dinero for the same offer. BetterHelp, affordable, private, online counseling, anytime, anywhere. 
Delilah. Welcome to the show, girlfriend. I'm so excited to have you here. I am so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on your platform. For sure. I've been a fan of yours for years. It has to be at least five years that I'm following you on social media. Stop it. Oh my God. (laughs) No, girl, for real, like you are like one of the people that like I go to on social media when I need like a a pep talk. Because you're always posting like, girl, get your shit together because you are capable (laughs) of so much more than you even know. And we need those people. So thank you for being that person for me. No problem. Look, my thing is, like, I feel like I always just try to be myself 100%. Like, people either really love it or they really don't. So it's just like, you know, I, I, I give myself and I am I guess I try to be like everyone's homegirl in a sense. And I mean, people love it. So <laughs> you, you do it well. And you are the self-proclaimed Philly's favorite Latina John. So what does that mean exactly? Who is Delilah? So Delilah D, that's me. Um, so no, I'm Philadelphia born and raised. I absolutely love my city. I just I just say, you know, it's so funny because I always just say like, yeah, I'm a Philly John because John is like, you know, a really big slang term here in Philly. You know, it's the person, place, or thing. So anywhere where we go, people are always like, what's a John? What's a John? I'm like, a John is anything you want it to be, okay? <laughs> but um, I'm just like, I'm involved in a lot of spaces here in Philadelphia. So like, whether it's the tech industry, entertainment, media, um, music I just like I just like to dabble in a whole bunch of different industries so like I'm kind of like and a lot of times like I'm almost always like kind of like the only you know Latina in these spaces as well especially when it comes to the tech the tech and startup industry um mm-hmm. so it's just like I'm just kind of always known as like the Latina girl um so it's just I'm like you know what I love I love saying I'm from Philly I love saying I'm a John and I love being Latina as fuck so like here I am I'm yes. from Latina <laughs> I love that. And guys, like John is basically like Baina in Spanish, right? My husband's Colombian and okay. everything Baina. It's like it's a person, place, or a thing. So yes. it's the same, it's the same concept. <laughs> Cracking the heck up. <laughs> so I want to talk all about your career journey because, like you said, you do a lot. You yeah. are an entrepreneur, you are a content creator, you are an event curator. So can you talk us through like what that career path has been like for you and how you got to where you are today? Girl, it has been a struggle, but a beautiful Mm. struggle. nonetheless. (laughs) Uh, Let me tell you, entrepreneurship is not for the faint heart. I, it is not something I recommend. I will never be the one that's on my social media telling people to quit their nine to five to live their dreams. And no, I'm not going to tell you that because it's not for everyone. Um, but I'm definitely am grateful to say that I love everything that I do. I love constantly dabbling into, like I said earlier, like different industries and just kind of constantly educating myself. Um, just kind of the start of it all. So honestly, everything just pretty much started in college. Even if you want to think kind of before that, just kind of my activism started even as early as high school because I was like putting together marches and protests for like the teens. Like I put together this teens against violence um, protests in Philly because there were so many teenagers dying like one summer. And I remember I was just like, you know what? Like, let's let me just get my friends together. And I was working for this, this summer gig that I had to kind of find out one of my coworkers had um, someone that worked for um, Channel 10 NBC. So they were able to get the news out and everything. But I've always been Phil. Phil frantic in a sense but um yeah so just kind of like I've always wanted to do stuff within my community and then Mm -hmm. just like when I went into college I just knew I'm like okay I want to I want to go to school for entrepreneurship not even realizing or kind of educating myself like entrepreneurship is so broad like I was an entrepreneur when I was in high school selling CDs one for five uh, one for three (laughs) dollars two for five dollars like I was that girl on LimeWire maybe telling my age right now but I was making mid CDs I'm like give me your give me your list I got you like that was my hustle I was an entrepreneur like an entrepreneur is any one that's like you know they're selling stuff there's just like you know having the little hustles and stuff but um when I get just kind of go into like the whole dynamics behind it I'm like okay what exactly is it that I want to do I don't want to just say I want to be an entrepreneur like what is it that like what is my hustle going to be like is my hustle going to have an impact is it like is it not it's I wanted to like not just like impact my community but be realistic as well I want to make money like I Mm -hmm. feel like especially within our community we're always had to we're always taught to be shy to be humble when it comes to like dollar signs or not even talk about expenses or anything like that I'm like no I want to be rich okay I want to be rich but in the sense <laughs> I want to be rich so I can give back to my community. And I don't mean that in any way to be vain or anything, but I just generally do feel like the more I have, the more that I can give back, which is like, you know, what I've been doing too. 
but in a sense, like I've always loved media. I've always loved entertainment. When I started my company, in a sense, it was, I was, I mean, I, I spoke about this a lot. Like I was kind of going through like a really dark place in my life. And I was just trying to figure out like, you know, just reading about different underdog stories, people who are working hard to make their dreams come true. And I realized that there wasn't one specific outlet that had like all these stories. You may find like a, you know, one or two cute human interest stories here and there, but there wasn't that one like outlet that had like every, all the stories that was surrounded around that. So I just figured like, why not start my own? That's where my pre where it was previously called the Lyling Company, where that was born. I had just read The Alchemist and just kind of just like The Alchemist and The Secret were like really game changers for me. And I know it's so cliche because everyone always mentions those those books, but like when me when I was in college, when it wasn't even a trend at the time, like The Secret especially, just kind of understanding the whole power of just you know just like speaking like your life into existence and you are who you surround yourself with and um. I just wanted to like continue to create that dynamic and just continue to push like that message out, especially like to my community. But yeah, it, it's just been, it's been interesting and, and tiring and beautiful and humbling and lots of tears involved. Just seeing the way my business has literally scaled from just being, I was just going to start with vlogging then it grew into blogging then it grew into doing media like red carpet events and it grew into me creating events and it grew into me launching an e-commerce platform. It's just, it's ever evolving and it's just, it's, it's definitely way bigger than I've ever imagined it to be. And I know it's only going to get any bigger. So it's definitely like been really excited. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. And I think that speaks to the journey of entrepreneurship in general. Like it is an evolution. It is not a destination. Oh, yes. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So what actually inspired you to get into the media and entertainment industry in the first place? Well, I just, I love media. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in the age of social media. I grew up in the age of reality television, which is funny because I don't watch any reality shows right now. <laughs> but like, but you know, at the time, and, I, and I, I hate to say this, but you know, when Keeping Up with the Kardashians first came out, like the real world, real roots, yeah. like all that, I just thought it was always interesting. But like, one thing I, I just like is just kind of like a human feel, but I wanted to bring... I wanted to kind of have an outlet that like share, there was no media at that time that I felt like share stories of people who look like me, people who come from my backgrounds, people who literally come from nothing, who are just struggling to make it. So I wanted to become that media outlet. So I like, I, in a sense, that's how it kind of grew from there because especially like people like know all the stories. You can find all the stories of the tea of celebrities and the stuff they're doing. And you know, it's great. Like the stuff they've accomplished, but we also have so many incredible like stories of these underdogs who are doing incredible things right now. Now, granted they haven't like made it to where they're supposed to be right you know or where they're going to be but like I love sharing that journey I love like hearing about people's journey like I love hearing about where they envision themselves to be and just like oh my god it's just such a beautiful moment and when you see like and, and especially me being like been doing this for years and have been surrounding myself with so many ma amazing people like kind of we all started our journeys together and everyone it took years again it's not to happen overnight but like years in the making just seeing everyone get their flowers or seeing you know my my friends my tribe my community like their dreams come true and it's just it's just such a beautiful thing so I just want to I, I just don't want to share like the glitz and glam of like you know people's end stories like I want people to see especially because like with me I've always acknowledged I thankfully like I'm thankful that I've had mentors in my life to steer me down the right path so like you know I've been, I've always been able to kind of like okay I want to you know I want to break certain cycles I don't want to be like a product of my environment I want my environment to be a product of me like I want to change but the thing is like a lot of my peers, they didn't have that, you know, they didn't have, and even though we grew up in the same surroundings, only because I had like, I was, you know, lucky to have one or two mentors in my life to kind of guide me different paths. So I always think about like, you know, my, like the, my friends that I grew up with, like, you know, people I went to share school, even if I wasn't friends with them, because we were in the same schools, we did the same after school programs, but how our lives are completely different because they didn't have anyone like just kind of showing them like they can do they can break certain like generational traumas they can break certain generational cycles like they can start a new legacy they can start a new path and that's just something I've always been passionate about because I mean I know I'm one person and I can't save any everyone but if I can just do something that has some sort of domino effect like I just want people to be like yo like 
wow, like she came from where I came from. She was able to do all this. And, you know, I can do that too. Or someone's story that I share, like, wow, his, you know, starting off story is way worse than where I started off at. So if he can do that, like, why can't I type of thing? I don't want just people to think like, it's just the luck of a draw. Like one to two people get lucky. Like, nah, we can do this. Like, especially in the society we live in right now, like, like we can do so much. Like people can become entrepreneurs off of their cell phones alone. Like people mm -hmm. don't even have access to laptops, but they're making money just from their cell phones. So it's just like, we have all of the resources within our grasp right now, but it's just how you're utilizing your resources. So it's just like, I mean, that's just kind of like my spot. <laughs> you are speaking to my soul. I feel like we are on the same mission. We are just uh, here to like normalize that success can also be Latina and female. Okay. Let them know. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. So you graduate from college. You said you got a degree in entrepreneurship, right? No. So in, in media studies, I went media to school studies. initially. Okay. So the college, so I went to Penn State when I initially went. Um, so I had went to one of the chapter campuses and I went to Penn State at Tuna first and I was going to go for entrepreneurship, but I decided like they had like a media studies program. And I'm like, you know what? Like this is kind of like when media was just like, just starting boom and a whole other different level. So I'm like, I really want to understand the dynamics of it. So I ended up changing my major to media studies. And then um, when I transferred over to main campus, yeah, I just, I, I just did that. <laughs> okay. And so once you graduated, what did that first career look like for you? So fun fact, I actually dropped out of college uh, ah. my senior Yeah, it's crazy. I dropped out my senior year because I had just started my company and I moved to New York. And that was a whole thing. Like, oh, my God, my mom was absolutely crushed and destroyed. Like my relationship with my mother, like it it dwindled because my mom went through a lot just to put me through college. Like she was a single mom. Like she worked multiple jobs, like barely slept, like, you know, work, literally work at times three jobs back to back to back just so she can pay for my rent. So I wouldn't have to worry mm. about the rent. So, um, but then when I dropped out, it was just cause again, at that time when I started my company, I was just not in the right frame of mind. Like I was not doing good. Like my grades were slipping. I was just not in a good place. So I had, I, at the time I was couch surfing in New York and I was just kind of like, just getting the word out of like what I wanted to do. Like my mission, I was just networking while I was in New York. And then I stood there for a while. Then I came back. I, I went back to school years later. So I actually just officially, I officially graduated in December, 2017. Oh, <laughs> that was kind of already. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't going to go back because my whole thing was like, you know, people go to college to get degrees, to get jobs and whatever. I'm like, I know I want to work for myself. I want to be the CEO of my life. My, so I don't need a degree. But the thing is like, I was just like, you know, I made it so far. And the thing is on top of that, like, you know, I would, I still, like, I still would have been the first, well, I am the first person for my family to graduate from college. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to give that to my grandparents because, you know, my grandfather was the one who migrated here to America from Peru. And that was just, you know, he's still, even though he's kind of conformed to our ways, but he's still like traditional in certain aspects. So it was just something I wanted to give to my grandparents so they can see. And it was like, it was like something like I wanted to do for me, like, you know, finishing something that I started. And like, you know what, I wasn't getting my degree because I wanted to get like a high paying job. I was getting my degree because I wanted to do it because I wanted to break that generational cycle of not going to college or not completing school. Like I'm doing this for me. And then my grandfather too. So. Uh. God, you're, I'm, I'm getting all the feels, y'all. So, oh, stop so, it! <laughs> I'm so proud of you, and I know, you. Your, I know your grandfather is as well, and I feel like you understood the sacrifices that your mom made, yeah. and you also wanted her to, like, know that, mom, it was it was worth it. Yes. No, for sure. I mean, I, I love my college experience. I, I, I still do believe, especially on a financial aspect, college is a big scam on that level, but it is a huge networking Rich. opportunity. <laughs> it is a huge networking opportunity. I can't, you know, if you go to college, that's how I'm like really big. Um, you know, to anyone that's there, I'm just like, you know, make sure you're involved with clubs or organizations. Just don't just go to class and go to go, go to your dorm room or go to class or whatever. If you're going to do that, go to a community college, like, mm -hmm. you no, know, like be involved because like a lot of the connections I made while in college and it's crazy how years later, they're still like coming through to like assist me in different ways when it comes to like my, my company and my business, or they've been able to provide opportunities for me because of like, you know, just us meeting in college and stuff. But yeah. 
Um, but yeah, again, it was just, uh, I just graduated. So to answer your question, when I officially graduated from college, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, I was already working in the events sphere. Like I was already about like four years into my business at that time. But, um, yeah, after I, after I did, and it's so funny because after I graduated, it was like a couple, the following year, yeah, in 2018, was when I quit my job that I was at because I just wasn't happy there. And I'm like, now, like, I need to do something that's just, I just need to do something that's for me. Like, I just, I wasn't happy. It wasn't, it wasn't fulfilling me anymore. And then, um, just took a leap of faith and, you know, one thing led to another. And that's how I ended up at iHeart, which was crazy because even with that, like, I technically didn't have a back, well, even though I didn't have a quote unquote corporate, corporate background in that industry, I had like, I had the blueprint. Like, I was mm-hmm. working, in, like, I was working in Philly. I was doing events. I had the connections. I know the venues. I know the people. I know sponsors. Like, I've done all of that with my own events. So the fact that, like, even though granted, I wasn't working for any of these other major corporations, but like, and I was, I did all this working for myself. So even when I was going through that whole process, when they had reached out to me, like they were like really impressed, just like the stuff I've been able to do here in Philly on my own without the backing of like a major media brand or a major media corporation. So, um, I love that. yeah, <laughs> well, and I think that that is like one of the things that people have such a mental block about that. It's like, if you didn't go to school for a specific thing that Ooh. nobody's going to take you seriously or. Okay. You need, you need to have X amount of experience or this mm-hmm. and that. And it's just like, yo, like you're stopping yourself from even starting some shit because yeah. you are like putting yourself in this fucking box that doesn't even exist. Agree. Because even like at some of these jobs that I was trying to apply for, like they require like a degree was a requirement or like mm-hmm. you know, X amount, two to four years, whatever experience in this field. I'm like, OK, I don't have a degree. And it, it was always it was always just like, damn, like just because I don't have a degree doesn't mean like I don't know, you know, how to do this. So right. it was definitely like it it, it, it it messed me up mentally a lot. But I mean, it is crazy because now that I finally had my degree, I mean, I wasn't let me not having a degree hold me back. Like, I'm still going to build my, I'm still going to build my blue, like my, my book. I'm still going to like create these now. I'm going to create these experiences. I'm not going to let me not have it, something hold me back or have to wait for, you know, me to get one thing in order to start something like, nah, like I was, I was still moving and grooving. And mm-hmm. even so, so that by the time when like I had a huge opportunity to become like the promotions director for iHeart, I'm like, okay, here's a degree, whatever. But here's also all these years of experience of what I've been doing I've been able to do on my own yes I love that okay so let's go back in time a little bit I want to know what your first year of entrepreneurship was like my first year entrepreneurship yeah (laughs) my first year was just kind of like my first five you know what's crazy and I I mean I speak about this openly like all the time like my company was 100% bootstrapped you know Mm -hmm. everything just came out of my pocket which is why like a lot it took me longer to achieve certain milestones than others only because like I was teaching myself everything. Like I didn't have anyone to teach me about like investments or capital or, or just kind of like, you know, business credit or anything of that sort. Like I'm just like, okay, I need to make it to this event. What hustles am I going to do right now to like, you know, to get me there? Or so it's just like, even like my first year, it's just, it was a lot, a lot of, I don't want to say trial and error. It was just a lot of errors. Like back to back to back. <laughs> Because again, like, I'm just like I I know I want to have this company. I'm like, okay, I know I want to do media. I know I want to do events. You know, I know I just kind of want to have like this whole brand. I'm like, but how do I go about like bringing this to life? Like, how do I go about like making this into like this you know multi million dollar like media company I envision it to be? So it's just like you know I just it was a lot of baby steps at first, and it wasn't. And I tell people all the time too, like it wasn't until my fifth year into doing this that I received like my first like. Like I received my first five thousand dollar check from a from a company to like you know to they they pay me for my services to put together an event and it's just crazy because after that it was just a whole domino effect. But um, it's just I, I don't know. But yeah, my first year honestly was horrible. My second year was even more horrible. My third year I wanted to give up. <laughs> Yeah. My fourth year, I'm like, oh, you know what? This isn't so bad. My fifth year, I'm like, oh, you're you're smart, maybe. <laughs> so you, you, you know, everyone, 
<laughs> you can maybe do this. But I mean, I just try to tell people all the time because people will try to sell you these, like these, they will try to gaslight the shit out of entrepreneurship and make it yes. seem like it's the most beautiful experience. Like it is not like it is, it, especially when you're literally, when you don't have any handouts, when you don't have a rubric, when you don't have anyone just kind of like teaching you the guidelines. It is hard. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But if you know, like, you're genuinely passionate about what you want to do, and you know, like, you have like your tunnel vision, like, you're, you're going to make it work, you're going to make it work, d- despite whatever obstacles, adversities are thrown your way. That's it. And I think that's what separates people that succeed and people that don't. It's just like mm-hmm. committing to the dream and saying, yes. I don't give a shit how long this takes. I'm mm-hmm. going to make it work. Okay. Maybe I gotta start an OnlyFans page, but I'm gonna find the money. (laughs) And you know what? I'm totally okay with that. I'm pro sex work, so that's totally fine too. Like I respect everyone's hustle. Like we're not gonna. I mean, as long as your hustle isn't hurting people or you know whatever. If it's not you know skinning babies a lot, we good. Do Do what you gotta do to make your dreams come true. I'm here for it. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So. As I think about your journey and just like your career path, I'm thinking that like the media industry has been really hard, hit hard by COVID. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how has that impacted you? Oh, girl. I mean, not necessarily. (laughs) I just did a whole post about this like yesterday. I mean, not even necessarily the media wise, but like even events. So like, you know, with me, I was just so used to doing events, like, you know, constantly we always had something going on. But, um, so when this hit, like, obviously all that was gone. And like, Mm -hmm. to me, like, you know, you know, remember back when this first started around February, March, we thought COVID was only going to last like maybe three or four weeks, maybe into like June or July. So it wasn't even, it wasn't like a big deal or anything, but come, um, yeah, I think what what when it hit me the hardest, I think I want to say it, it was some point in mid March when I was just like, wait, no, like this is real. Like yeah. we're really not going to leave the house. Like we're really stuck. Like wow, this this is really this is really ghetto right now. <laughs> so when it actually hit me the most was when like I had a, when I deleted all of like the pending events I had on my calendar. For the remainder of 2020. So, like, all, like, my, I deleted, like, my, my meetings, like, any, anything they had coming up, you know, TBD events, because like, everything I just put down on my calendar, or, like, events that were ready, um, we already knew what we were going to do. So, when I, when I first did that, I think it took me kind of a day to process, and I was just like, okay, wow, we really don't know when we're getting out of this. Like, like it's yeah. really, like, we're really, like, in a state of uncertainty right now. And this is really, like, wow. Like, granted, I've never been, like, a stickler for a schedule. But, like, I still, like, I will go by my calendar. And I'm like, okay, I know I have this coming up. I have that. So it, it just still gave me, like, a sense of security. Like, I just, I loved always having stuff going on. But what's crazy is that, like, you know, I remember right after that happened, like, within the following week, it's just, when I realized that I don't have anything coming up, like that's when like everything just started hitting me mentally and emotionally. And like my, I just started spiraling down and it's just like, it hit me because what's, what's crazy is that like, I realized I was using being busy as a coping, as a coping mechanism for me to not address certain traumas that I didn't want to talk about. And when that hit me, girl, when that hit me, like it just like, it was like, Oh, wow like wow this is still triggering me oh wow like I haven't addressed this or I haven't like I haven't closed this chapter I haven't closed that like I would because I will always bottle everything up and I'll just keep it moving because my thing is I don't have time to fully process certain things or process certain feelings or certain you know stuff that's happened to me because like I always had something going on Mm. like you're talking like my I'm constantly on the move and then from like from being always constantly on the move always at like whether I'm at a concert hosting an event speaking speaking at a concert speaking like I'm doing stuff back and forth and now all of a sudden I'm being told to sit still in the house now I'm just like and I'm here like trapped with my thoughts and I and then it's just like it, everything hit me all at once and I'm like wow like there, I'm not as healed as I thought I was so and I'm like <laughs> when I realized that I'm like so I'm like am I like being a am I being a hypocrite I'm, I built this entire brand off of 
you know, just like, you know, following your dreams, like being healed, all that fun stuff. And meanwhile, I realized that I wasn't even fully healed myself. So like mm. that, like impacted me in that sense. And just like, you know, work wise, again, like all of my events, like that was like, you know, I ha I've always had multiple streams of income and it's yeah. something I've always like, you know, I've always been grateful for that. I've been able to establish like, you know, even at the time when I had my salary from iHeart, that's not like I was just working on that. Like I was just like, okay, this is just like, that's my, that's whatever my savings money, but like all the money that goes into my company, my brand and everything was like me working with, you know, other brands for sponsorships, you know, working, creating events speaking at events hosting events so i've always had like multiple like i always had money coming into my account so which mm -hmm. is so to have all that stop too like you know that affected me as well and i'm just like you know like wow okay delilah it's time to like sit down re-strategize obviously we're gonna have to adjust to this new to this new normal we're in right now which is why like i just kind of went into now dealing like you know just kind of like um building on my e-commerce platform more now than ever before but even still, just kind of media wise, it's just, I feel like the media, well, the thing is I've, oh my, so anyone to follow shift world, like I've always been just about like the empowerment of like the black and brown community in general and just mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, highlighting certain things, um, certain like, you know, achievements or just like, you know, just lifting the veil on certain stuff that's going on in the world just to kind of let people know. But it's just crazy because now since people didn't have the distractions of like, you know, of live sports games or concerts where people were kind of stuck in the house and seeing all just how messed up America really is. Yes. <laughs> now all of a sudden, everyone's media has completely changed, and now everything is, has been all, which is a beautiful thing too. But it's it's beautiful when it's like actually when it's when they actually mean it, not because they're doing it because it's trendy, but seeing like the whole Black Lives Matter movement, you know, just the empowerment of just like, you know, oppressed groups in general and just like, you know, how can we do, how can we like create a better society? How can we create a better America? Like how, and just seeing everything. I, I feel like a, it's been beautiful in a sense, like media wise, seeing a lot of, especially major media brands just kind of pivot and seeing like dumb trying to make their um pages more inclusive and mm -hmm. realizing like wow i wasn't really being as inclusive as before like it is really important for us to have representation for other people and stuff but i mean but the thing is media wise that didn't change that didn't affect me because like that was stuff that i was already talking about like prior to all this before it became trendy <laughs> right yeah I, I love the the fact that we're all talking about how shitty a lot of these systemic issues in this country are but it's like y'all this this didn't just start you just started paying attention to it okay yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> you were actually recently featured in the press for your work to support the black lives that matter movement mm -hmm. and so how did that journey for you start like obviously you've been in this space where you're talking about social justice issues for a while so what inspired you to like you know use your e-commerce platform to support the cause. You know what's crazy is that I've always knew that like I wanted to create some sort of like the like activism hub with my e-commerce platform. Like I wanted aside from like so anyone to see my shirts, they know like my shirts is definitely like it's pro black, pro brown, pro queer, like it's just pro like, you know, live your best life, you know, just yeah. kind of like, especially for like, for these groups that are typically more oppressed. Like I just want, I want people like to have like that sense of pride, like, you know, you know, just if you're made by immigrants, we have like, you know, our made by immigrant shirt, like walk around, be prideful of that, be prideful of, you know, the stuff your ancestors went through. Like, you know, we have a lot of um, shirts that have powerful statements like that, but I've always knew that I wanted to have like a, a series of relief shirts where like a hundred percent of the sales proceeds would go towards certain causes that I'm, that I'm, you know, passionate about. So well, so I knew I wanted to do like, you know, immigrant rights. I wanted to do, you know, something for like the Black Lives Matter movement, something for, you know, those who've been wrongfully convicted, you know, just um, like, you know, also for like, you know, people in foster care. So it's just like just different causes. But I didn't know that was going to happen so soon. So obviously with everything that happened with George Floyd, with everything that's been happening, you know, with everyone is just like just across like the media and again because we're stuck at home and where mm -hmm. even though i'm always reading about this always this is nothing new for me or my roommate which i'm gonna let you know how she was um tied into this later in a bit but you know this is something we're always reading about but again because we're constantly consumed because we're not busy prepping for an event or prepping for whatever like we're here sitting in front of news we're here on our phones on our laptops and it's literally all we see so obviously it consumed the heck out of us so um my roommate i remember i was just like i was on i was on my couch um i was I, I was like working on orders and my roommate came down because like with me like i'm such an emotional person and like 
I definitely like being the impact that I am. I just felt like the state of the nation was definitely weighing heavily on me. I, not just myself, I'm not gonna make this about me, but just like the entire country, you know, everyone was feeling it. But my roommate came down and she was like, hey, like if I were to make a design for, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, like, you know, would you, could you, do you wanna sell it on your shop? And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, that's something that I wanted to do anyway. Like, you know, go for it. Like, I'll set it up. I'll handle all the orders, whatever. Because my roommate, she's like, she's freaking incredible. Like, she has such a, like, a creative eye. Like, she's really good with designs. Like, that's her area forte. And, like, me, like, obviously, like, I'm really good with, like, the marketing and stuff. So we just put our talents together. And when we pushed this out, like, we thought, like, okay, for sure, we can definitely raise about, like, maybe, like, two or $3,000 to donate to, like, you know, like, the causes and stuff. And then... But girl, we did not know that the moment this dropped, it was going to take off the way that it did. And even like the first week alone, like with the first week of sales, we were able to donate over $8,000 towards wow. like, you know, so we decided to like, we wanted to, so we knew like, you know, the first couple months we're going to be donating 50, 50, um, one to the George Floyd Memorial Fund. And then also towards Black Visions Collective. Um, so the, it's a grassroots organization that's, you know, that's on the ground, that's doing the groundwork. But once the George Floyd Memorial Fund, um, closes up, we're still like, that shirt is not, it's not like a one and done deal. Like we're mm-hmm. going to, I'm keeping it on the site. So like, you know, we're always every month. So we were, first we were doing weekly, um, uh, we were doing the weekly donations, but now we're going to do donations once a month. So every month we're always going to donate to different grassroots organizations that are doing the groundwork. Like there are, there like, you know, on the front lines, there are, that the money is going to go directly to the people basically. So, um, <laughs> thank you. I know last month we had did the because Black Witches Collective received like millions of dollars of support, so they actually asked us if we can donate any funds we we're looking to donate to them, like you know, to these other uh, smaller grassroots orgs. So mm-hmm. last month we we had donated to the Black Immigrants um, Rights Collective under George Floyd, and the month before that was another nonprofit for Black Women Speak. That was just like a, it was like a safe space for Black women to go and just kind of like get like the therapy and the mentorship that they need and stuff. So like every month we're just going to be like donating to different causes, but as long as obviously it's for the empowerment of like Black liberation. Amazing. How much money have you been able to donate so far? Over twelve thousand dollars, <laughs> and just yeah, like in just four months. So it's definitely it's 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 beautiful. Like the that response we received. I, girl, I know. Like, I again, it was being that fact. I was like, I know, especially with my community, like, just both of us together, like, we were definitely gonna be able to donate at least like one to two thousand dollars. But <laughs> we did not think we we're gonna be able to donate this much, especially this short amount of time. For sure. But that just goes to show you, like, when you come from a place of just true, like, wanting to help. And you use the skills that you already have, like you can have mm-hmm. an impact beyond what you even think you're capable of having. Like we we don't exactly. need to be too famous to be doing amazing things. Okay, so I want to talk a little about a little bit about limiting beliefs because I feel like that is such a big struggle when you're on this journey to entrepreneurship. So, what are some limiting beliefs that you've encountered, and how have you been able to overcome them? That I won't be able to see <laughs> mm. something that's, that, a, that's as, a real as, one. Because, especially because of my background, um, you know, I grew up single mom, you know, <laughs> single immigrant mom, you know, we grew up and uh, was raised, you know, in North Philly, went to school in North Philly, didn't really have a lot like, you know, my mom, she just she can barely like all her money went towards basically just keeping the roof over our head. So like, even like just to eat and so we'll go to my grandma's house because that, that's how we ate was going to my grandma's house. Like we didn't, she didn't really have enough like leftover money to even be buying food to have like fully stocked fridges or whatever, to be honest. So, you know, thankfully like my family, my family's like, we're, we're really close. Um, you know, we're, my immediate family, we're all that we have here. So we're always doing stuff together. We're always eating together. We're always celebrating together. Um, so we've always been there for one another, like throughout our hardships and stuff. But, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just like, and it's something I don't take lightly at all. Um, coming from where I come from and it's just, you know, it's just, it's not, I hate to say that like, like things, certain experiences that I experience are not quote unquote supposed to happen to people like me. Mm. so but it's just they are happening to me and it's like you know what no like this can happen to people like me like screw like whatever you know stereotypes people try to have and stuff you know especially like towards people that come from my background but yeah I guess one of the big things is just like I won't really amount to anything and so how have you actually been able to accept your success it's something that I'm still learning to process on a daily basis and it's just like just uh, share uh, I don't know, just kind of showing gratitude. 
mm-hmm. you know, just showing gratitude for where I am and accepting like, you know, this is, this is my passion that like, I'm, you know, I'm walking into every day. Like, you know, like my whole thing is like, I don't take lightly my existence here on earth at all. You know, there's a reason why I'm here today. There is a reason why like even God, like instilled this passion inside of me or, you know, whatever anyone's religious beliefs are like the reason why the universe, you know, Allah, whoever your religious, your respective religious beliefs are like, there's a reason why like they instilled this, this passion inside of me. It's because like, you know, and it, and it's, it's, it's because it's meant to happen. It's meant to succeed. And, you know, I had to realize like, you know, my ancestors, and I talk about this all the time. We even have like on one of our shirts, like, you know, I, my ancestors fought for my bloodline to survive. Like there's a reason yes. why I am here today. You know, millions, millions of people from like, <laughs> from my, from, you know, where we come from through colonization, like there are, their entire bloodlines are wiped out. Yep. My bloodline survived. That's something to not take lightly at all. Like the fact that I'm here right now, the fact that I'm able to wake up and breathe and just kind of experience life is something I don't take lightly at all. Like I could have died in my sleep last night. There's a reason mm-hmm. why God woke me up this morning. Like I'm, wo- I've been woken up because like, I'm giving another shot of life because He know I got shit to do. You know? <laughs> okay. So it's like that's how I've been able to accept like you know everything that's come my way, and it's just because everything is not just for me, like. Everything is just everything that I do. I operate out of love. Like I operate out of like my community and I operate because I just, and it's not when it's not kind of a thing like, oh, I just want to be successful. Cause like, bro, like when I succeed, like I know my community succeeds too, because it's not just about me, like winning the gold medal. Like it's about me winning. So I can like turn back around and lift others up with me. Like I'm really big on just like, you know, plugging my people. in when I come, like the more I elevate, like how can I, you know, plug this person in? Where does it make sense? Like, I just like, you know, cause I want us all to win together. And again, like, it's just like, we're here creating whole new legacies. We're here like literally changing the game for our family lines. And that's what like <laughs> keeps me going. That's what like, you know, that's how I'm able to just kind of appreciate and acknowledge like my, what I, what I've been able to, to see that so far. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> I love what you're saying because it really is so much more than just about you like Mm -hmm. when you do something that is extraordinary you serve as an example to so many people that come after you because now they can look at you and say well before there wasn't a a latina who was dominating this space but now i have a reference point and so i can do this shit too Okay. <laughs> My girl, I did this. You can too. Yes. That's why we're here. Like, I feel yes. like that's why you exist. That's why I, I am doing this podcast because we need to normalize this shit. Like, we need to yes. normalize that the struggle is not the only option for us. All right. Bro, I'm here for it. I am here for it. Like, look, I'm telling you, like, and I said it over and over again, like, we were, we were taught how to survive. We're not really taught how to live. Mm. But, like, I feel like this generation, we're changing that. Like, we're teaching ourselves how to live. Like, we're teaching ourselves, like, how to, like, really appreciate life. And it's just, it's something that we've never had before. Like, every, like, our mother, our parents, like, you know, their parents, like, we, there was just taught, like, you know, we just need to survive every day. We need to provide for our children. We need to make it, you know, we need to stretch out these checks. We need to do what we can to provide for our family, but not really taught, like, how to, like, really right. live so as a self-proclaimed workaholic you know it can be very hard to have balance <laughs> in your life and girl i get it because i'm the same way like especially covid like i've fucking been working myself into the ground as a coping Ugh. mechanism to just escape the shitty reality of like uh-huh. real life right so along those lines it can be very hard to have balance um so what does self-care look like for you what do you do to make sure you're just not you know, burning out because of overwork. Therapy. <laughs> Shout out to betterhealth.com. Yes. <laughs> Online therapy. <laughs> they official partner for this podcast, y'all. Oh, okay. really? Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. No, yes. therapy. Um, I just kind of like appreciated my time by myself and, you know, just enjoying my downtime like not because you know what the thing is because since we've been able like before it's this whole adjustment period is no longer working from home it's literally living at work mm. so it's just i've been having like having to separate that like no 
I am closing my laptop right now. I am going to enjoy this book. I am going to enjoy the show. I am going to enjoy this workout. Like I am going to enjoy this nap. Like, you know, just kind of separating the two, but just honoring my alone time, not thinking just because like, okay, I'm not in the office right now. Or, you know, basically work hours are all hours because COVID everyone's home. So it's a great time to email everyone. It's a great time to hustle because once the world opens back up, we want to be millionaires. We want to do this. Like, no, like we need to like really still, you know, understand, appreciate how to be still and enjoy the stillness too. not be like have anxiety because, oh my God, I need to be doing something right now because the world, you know, we we need to be doing something right now. Like just enjoy stillness. Yo, that is a word, okay? And I'm still working on that shit, so. We all are, girl. We all are. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So what advice would you give to someone who's ready to start their entrepreneurial dream, but really just doesn't even know where to start? Girl, just, it's 2020. We got Google University and YouTube (laughs) University. Like, just put on a Google shirt. <laughs> put on a Google shirt. Look, look at the look at just kind of different strategies of other people who may have worked in the field that you want to do. See what they've been able to achieve, and just kind of and see how you can implement that. Implement that to your own strategies, and also like even if you're looking to kind of network with people, make sure you're intentional with your networking. Don't just like slide into someone's DM like, "Hey, let's link up." Oh, hey, you inspire me. We'll have to get on a call. Like, no, like we need, especially these people who have already invested in time and energy to building their brands or building their, building their companies. Like they like time is like, you know, time is extremely valuable. And I feel like a lot of people now, especially entrepreneurs are understanding the value of time, understanding the value of when saying no, because we always want to say yes, yes, yes. But like, sometimes we just need to say no. And it's nothing against anyone else, but like, you know, it's for our own mental health. So even when you reach out to someone because you're like at the starter stages, like I'm like, I'm really big on networking in general be genuine about it and be intentional about it. So don't just like go into like trying to follow someone and be like, Hey, I want to do this. Or can you do this for me? Type of thing. Like, Hey, even if you just kind of start off a couple conversations, like, Hey, so like, you know, I admire your work. Um, you know, just keep up the great work. Don't even ask for anything at first, you know, just be intentional about it. And then, you know, maybe like another like buff or two down the line, if you said, one thing I will always say is please, 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 if it's someone that you want to network with, if you see they have an email in their bio, if you want to reach out for anything, whatever collaboration, just send them an email. Do not send them a DM. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, just show that already, because that shows already that you are respectful of their time. That you that you're not entitled to like their responses or anything. That you're not entitled just because you follow them or you just feel like okay. Because I, I think that's another thing too, especially like for me, I'm I'm always like all my stories. I'm showing my day to day. You know, I try to like respond back to everyone, but because like I'm always so like. I'm because like I'm always on stories so people just feel like okay you know what I have direct access to her I can you know I can ask her for this I can ask her for that I can ask her whatever but it's just it, and it becomes overwhelming because if you imagine like how many people I have that with that same mindset they're just always constantly hitting me up for something and it's just my DMs are always flooded mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's just like you know and a lot of times like I, I go like now like now I'll go like maybe I'm not going to answer any DMs for a day or two I'll answer them later and again it's not against anyone I just don't want to answer any DMs right now but one thing i'm always checking is my emails i'm constantly mm-hmm. checking my emails so um uh, if you see that someone has an email or someone you want to like you know build a network with send them an email um and again like be intentional about it even if it's just like hey like you know don't just say like hey i just want to pick your brain like don't don't say that just like hey i love how you done this and this and that this is what i'm currently working on i would love to if we can collaborate in this way just show that you already know what you want from them like and just be like, you know, be direct, you know, if they don't answer, they answer, if they don't, they don't just keep it moving, but don't feel entitled to people's responses. Just like, you know, always show support, be genuine about it. And like I said, entrepreneurship is not for the faint heart. It is not going to be easy, um, especially when you're first starting out. It's, you know, people would try to sell you this dream, but this dream is not real. <laughs> <laughs> and it's expensive. This, this dream is a nightmare, but... <laughs> <laughs> it is a nightmare that can turn into a beautiful manifestation but it's right. going to require like lots of work and i just i just want people to go in understanding like the work that is put behind this and not like you know i these it's not a know, fantasy this, it's not a fantasy it can yeah. become a fantasy afterwards but you need to understand like the blood sweat and tears is going to have to go into and the grit that's behind it and 
Uh, but once you reach that level of success, like I'm telling you, it's such a beautiful experience. Be like, wow, everything I went through, like all that crying I went through, all the failures I went through, everything, like this is why. Mm -hmm. You're going to have those moments when you don't give up, when you're going to have, oh my gosh, when you, when you just have like those moments where you've re reached certain levels and it's just like, wow, everything just makes sense. But yeah, like even when, when you feel like you're failing, when you feel like no one's like uh, appreciating or understanding, you have to be your biggest fan and just, just keep pushing forward always. That's a fact, yo. I feel mm -hmm. like entrepreneurship at the end of the day, like you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Because <laughs> the, the whole nine to five culture, like that is a great way to achieve a lot of comfort, but not necessarily success. If your definition of success does not involve working for somebody else and helping them build their own dream. But when you actually yeah. get comfortable with like not knowing what lies ahead and not knowing how much money you're going to make, but you're okay with that shit and you're willing to like, yeah do what you gotta do like that's when you know you have what it takes let them know <laughs> <laughs> all right um so i love mindset stuff i love like you know manifestation and channeling what you want in the world and i know you're a fan too because obviously you read books like the secret um <laughs> so along those lines do you have a money mantra or something that you say to yourself to channel abundance yo quiero dinero <laughs> Yes. Yo, I could not have planned it better. I mean, plug, but not plug. Yo, that's, that's the best fucking affirmation I've ever heard in my life. Sounds familiar, right? No wonder where that came from. I love no, that but um, I am deserving of everything. I am deserving of all the money that's going to come my way. And, you know, I'm accepted. I'm not expecting anything, but I'm open to all. Like, I'm open to all the dollars that are coming my way. But, yeah, mm. honestly, just keep it short and simple. Yo quiero dinero. Yes. And it's going to happen because I want it. <laughs> and I that's make it. happen. That's <laughs> it. We have solved all your problems, y'all. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Delilah, this conversation has been amazing. You are just absolutely inspirational and amazing. So for people that want to follow you and find out more about your journey and support your mission, where can we find you? You can find me uh, on Cats R Us on IG. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am Delilah. She's like, what? I'm like, wait. Oh, I don't like, like, follow that like, one like, well, I don't follow <laughs> You know, you can follow me on I am Delilah D, um, D E L I L A H D E E E. And if you want to follow my company's page, it is shift S H F T dot world W O R L D. Amazing. Delilah, thank you so, so much for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you were super inspired by Delilah's story. If there's a certification out there for being a natural born hustler, I think Delilah is the first person who should receive that certification. I mean, the fact that she has tackled so many barriers to get to where she is today, she did not give up on her dreams, I think is a true testimony to what we all should be striving for when it comes to pursuing what we are passionate about. We can't take no for an answer. We have to be willing to accept that things might take time. They might take money. They might take resources. They might take sleepless nights. But if your dreams are worth it, you're not going to be afraid to give up a little bit and sacrifice a little bit just to get to the other side. So that one day when you are that boss babe killing it, running your own business, you can look back and say all of that struggle was totally worth it. So until next time, I hope that you stay inspired. I hope that you stay hustling and stay poderosa.
On the Yo Quiero Dinero podcast and associated entities, all information provided is for general information purposes only and does not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice. Listeners should not act upon the content or information found here without first seeking appropriate advice from an accountant, financial planner, lawyer, or other professional. We assume no responsibility for information contained on this podcast and associated entities and disclaim all liability with respect to such information, including but not limited to any liability for errors, inaccuracies, omissions, or misleading or defamatory statements. Usage of this podcast and associated content constitutes an explicit understanding and acceptance of the terms of this disclaimer.